So uh, hopefully the concepts introduced in the previous slides are uh, are clear. Uh, if not, if you have some questions or you have some doubts, I would highly recommend that you pause this video and um, go back to the previous slides and try to revisit those concepts. Next, we are going to take a look at the different interfaces in LTE network. We'll um, we will begin by taking a look at what is an interface. So the first question that comes to our mind is what is an interface, right? So interface represents a channel on which two network entities exchange information. And this is in plain, simple terms. Second question is why do we need interfaces? Interfaces are needed in LTE to deliver information. Uh, interface Information can be signaling or user data like we had uh, taken a look at in the previous slides for a subscriber or network element. So interfaces are essentially, think of it like uh, highways, right? And uh, highways are used to get from one place to the other, right? So similarly, there are interfaces where if you wanted to get from one network element to the other, you would use an interface. And there are multiple interfaces in LTE and each of these interfaces has a property. Uh, the other lo uh, logical question is who defines these interfaces, right? The various network interfaces are actually defined by 3GPP um, and all network vendors or manufacturers are required to comply to these standards. And uh, th the reason they have to comply to these standards is because so that they can interoperate between each other. Say you were to get an MME from uh, vendor A and you were to get a SGW from vendor B, right? You still want these MME and SGW to work together and uh, serve your LTE network. And the only way they can do that is bo if both of them were to obey the standards defined by 3GPP. So that's why 3GPP is, plays a central role in defining these interfaces. Uh, do these interfaces remain static? Uh, obviously not. Uh, depending on new capabilities and requirements, uh, 3GPP continues to make changes to the interface standards. However, in most cases, they are backward compatible. So, so if there were changes that were made in an interface, um, in most cases, they make sure that they are backward compatible. So, uh, so the old equipment or the legacy equipment continues to work. And you don't have to go and buy uh, new network equipment every time something changes because that would be bad and expensive, right? Okay, so this, uh, this picture may look familiar from the previous slides. Uh, this is the same picture. Again, you have a EU TRAN. Uh, part of the architecture in this red box and you have the evolved packet core um, in this box with the different functions for each of these network elements listed here um, and so I didn't point it out in the previous slides uh, uh, this was intentional uh, but on each of these connections here like uh, you can either have a dotted connection or you can have a solid connection you see uh, some letters uh, there, like here you see S1C, you see X2, you see UU, um, you see some S11, you see S5, you see uh, S6A, SGI. So all these are nothing but names of the interfaces. Um, and these arrows are obviously the interfaces. You can have uh, an interface that serves user plane traffic, uh, which would be denoted by a solid um, arrow, whereas you could have an interface that serves control plane information, which would be represented by this dashed uh, or broken arrow. Now, 3GPP does a wonderful job at defining each of these interfaces. And, um, and for every interface, they actually have a series of documents in which they go in the the nitty gritty details uh, on that interface and so here i have listed all the uh, references uh, for from 3gpp for each of these uh, interfaces so so all the interfaces within say for example the eu tran 
are explained in these documents for the s1 you have similarly these documents for x2 th these are the documents that you would go to for mme you have a bunch of documents and so on and so forth um, the good news is all these documents are uh, available publicly uh, for anyone to access and they can be accessed by going to this URL So if you were to click here and you were to search for any of these It's going to take you to the document and the document can either be in a PDF or a word format and you can uh, You can go through in detail on each of these interfaces um, These documents are very detailed um, They can last you know from a few pages to a few hundred pages because they have to specify every single thing, uh, every single function, uh, so that uh, it's uh, it's uh, it's clear um, what they are intending to to the vendors, so that the in vendors can build uh, network equipment that um, is interoperable. So, so feel free to check out these uh, interfaces. Uh, on this URL, they are highly useful, uh, especially when you're troubleshooting um, and you want to go down to, um, um, uh, you want to take a deep dive into messaging, you